Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to apply thermal compound or thermal grease or thermal paste whatever you want to call it it's all the same stuff now you'd think that it's quite easy to apply thermal paste to a CPU in 2019 and it is it's that simple it's not very difficult to apply thermal compound it just seems that the internet seems to want to make it uh, very difficult to apply thermal compound now you've got many different methods the spot method the line method the uh, the smoothing method you know five dots five lines across method here we have the heat spreader here and the CPU is underneath here and uh, what we're going to be doing is putting the compound on top of this and if I remove this you would see the CPU underneath here this is just to help draw heat away from the CPU and of course you'd put compound on here which will fill in all the imperfections on the heat spreader here and on the uh, CPU cooler and then basically it will help uh, dissipate the heat from the CPU as it's uh, designed to do so what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of different methods to see what footprint is left behind once we remove the uh, heat sink now there's been a lot of debate about uh, whether uh, that you should use the spot method the spread method uh, the five dots the line whatever it is you're going to be using the cross method there's a bunch of different ones and we're going to test them out and have a look now personally i'm not going to go into the temperatures because i know it's a complete waste of time and there's not much difference between all of these now puget systems has done extensive testing and they come up with the same result like a lot of other people which is there's not much difference in temps now there's a whole heap of um people on the internet that write articles saying this is the right method this is the wrong method you can see down that is slightly off center here now if i was using the uh, spot method here that would be wrong because it's off center you want to try and get it dead center when you put pressure on it so it spreads out nice and evenly but i'll do the spread method first because it's not center and we can smooth it out now you can either use a card or you can use a glove like this i know kerry holzman uses a glove to spread his thermal compound out and i've used the spread method myself on occasion i normally use either the spread method or the uh, spot in the middle of the cpu now you can see here we've got an even coverage now it some people might say that you should use a card and get a nice flat surface and it makes sense to do so uh, but if you want to paint it on with gloves you can do i'm pretty sure there's not going to be any difference whatsoever in the temps and i'm pretty sure there's plenty of people that have said in the comment section of kerry's videos that you should be doing it this way and not this way and this is the internet for you so we're going to move on and clamp this down and test it to see what the uh, look is like once we remove the actual pump here now you're getting massive pressure by tightening this down and this is exactly what you want to do if you're pushing this down with a piece of perspex with your fingers then you're not going to get the same pressure uh, as you would do by pressing this down and also we can't see in between the cpu heat spreader and the um the actual heat sink itself you can't see what it's compressed like the only way you're going to see that is by using a piece of perspex and i think puget systems made some sort of jig up so they could clamp it down and you could see what it looks like and to be honest they've done over 12 different methods and there was like 0.45 uh, or or one degree difference between all of them uh, so it's really not worth even uh, debating to be fair but i just wanted to make it clear and show you that there is really no point in uh, debating these types of topics because they're just pointless now we've got the pump on here i'm not going to turn it on that may have a, a slight difference in the way uh, the compound is distributed across the heat spreader but it's got good pressure on here and I want to remove this and we can then test to see what pattern is left now there seems to be a big debate about air pockets and stuff like that inside there and to be honest with you I've been doing this over 30 years and I've had you know no problems whatsoever by putting compound on then there used to be these sort of topics many years ago it seems that it's just come into flavor that uh, we like to debate about whether we should be using a line method, a spot method, or painting it on, or spreading it on, or whatever you want to call it. And there are uh, just pointless debates, really. So I'm just going to remove this, and you'll be able to see the pattern and the, uh, what it looks like. Now, I'm pretty sure that all those imperfections from using your finger instead of a card would have been compressed out and uh, made it nice and smooth. 
because obviously the amount of pressure and force underneath this uh, pump here is going to be quite immense. So let's pull that off and take a closer look at the results here and you can see. Now you don't need to go right up to the edges, that's another uh, bit of misinformation that people think that you have to go right to the edges. The CPU is right in the center there and as long as you're covering that, that's all that really matters and uh, it just won't make much much of a difference. You don't want to obviously spill over the edge and go over to the edge of the CPU because if it's conductive uh, compound and they've got little tiny um, electrical components around the edge then they could also short or arc uh, especially with that liquid uh, metal that they use in there where they delid these and put those on. You have to be super careful with that stuff. So what we're going to do is take a closer look here now you can see the pattern there. Now I, I'd assume that those little tiny gaps there are what they're calling air pockets where it's been compressed down. And to be honest, in all my years I've never heard so much hogwash. It's a load of nonsense. Literally when I put this on, uh, the temperatures are going to be as you would expect from this type of compound. Because obviously you're going to get different compounds that uh, do different things. Also, you've got to take into account the silicone lottery. If you've got a diff, we could do matching uh, setups here and have different results because your CPU might be diff giving out different temperatures to my CPU. Mine might run a bit hotter than yours, and it's very difficult to uh, give a, a definite result of what a true reflection is, what everyone's going to have. So it will be compound differences and also uh, the silicone lottery. And of course what cooler you're using as well will also uh, determine what um, uh, type of results you're going to get. So that is the spread method. I've cleaned all that off and now we're going to do the spot method. Now also I'm using uh, the sort of cheap uh, Chinese brand of uh, compound here, HY710. It's like an, a silver based uh, type of compound and I've sort of done a bit of a semi line dob there instead of a dob in the middle but it'll all work out in the end. As you'll see that really doesn't really matter too much but I'm pretty sure that someone's going to get triggered about the shape of that blob that I've done in the middle of the CPU and how it's going to uh, you know hinder the performance of the compound and the CPU and the temperatures uh, but you know they really need to get out a little bit more. So what we're going to do here is just put this on top and compress it down. And I bet you if I did the temperatures, there would be hardly any difference. Uh, probably so negligible, it wouldn't even be worth mentioning. It would probably be something on the region of 0 0.25 or 35 difference of a Celsius. Uh, and that's how stupid it is. Uh, you know, so you could check the Puget Systems one out and there's a bunch of them on the internet you'll see there's no difference but some people do get triggered about which way you're doing it and you get much better performance and it's really as long as you get a spread across that heat spreader that's all really matters really to be fair and uh, we're just going to tighten these down yeah, and uh, once that's tightened down we'll loosen it off and then we'll see the results of the spread now I'm pretty sure that it hasn't gone right to the ends if it has then I've put too much on and I'm pretty sure that you should just have a little bit missing around the outside which is pretty normal for the uh, spot method you're not going to go right up to the end of the heat spreader as if you was uh, you know painting it on or spreading it out you would probably go right to the edges whereas this won't and uh, there won't be much of a difference so let's get this off and we'll take another look at uh, what it looks like now to be honest you could use either of these methods and it really doesn't matter in my personal opinion so we're off now and uh, we'll take a look and there as i said you've probably got a little tiny bit around the outside which is quite normal and it doesn't matter it's going to do its job and uh, you can see here now there wasn't as much compound on here now you're going to be using a bit more compound with the spread method and uh, because obviously you're painting it on and giving it a good coverage uh, so it's very difficult to you sort of average out how much you're putting down but the spot method you know just general size this is quite a big CPU it's a 2011 socket uh, so it's quite a bigger C slightly bigger CPU so what we're going to do next is try another method we're going to try the cross method here now a lot of people say that this is 
another good method to use now the end on this uh, applicator here is not the best now that's a, a good line there but my second line here is not the best here so as you can see here and I've gone right through the line here what an amateur but we'll get that down and uh, see how that turns out and that looks a lot of compound to me but some people say that this is a good method so we'll, and I've also seen people saying put dots on the insides of the cross on each of them areas there which is a bit OCD to be honest but hey you know put a smiley face on there for all I care as long as you get the compound on that's all that really matters so we'll screw this down and we'll see how it's covered and uh, what it looks like now of course I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of people out there that seem to think they know way more than everyone else and they're gonna critique the patterns and the way it's gone and the air pockets and all this nonsense and uh, to be honest that's exactly what it is nonsense but we'll just carry on with it and uh, you can use whatever method I think you're getting the idea now that you can just pretty much get the compound onto the uh, CPU heat spreader and uh, you're good to go so I've tightened that up and now I'm going to take it back off now I'm pretty sure if I was doing a, a temperature test here you're probably going to see you know not even one degree Celsius difference between all of these and if you did I really wouldn't worry about it because one degree Celsius could be the difference between the ambient temperature in your room uh, what you're doing on the computer whether you're rendering editing or whatever you're doing you know and I think to be honest one degree Celsius is not going to kill the PC you know so you're not going to gain much by it so let's uninstall uh, this uh, pump now and we can have a look and I can see a little gap around the corner and you can see there's quite a big squidge at the ends of there and that's because in my personal opinion there's probably a little bit too much compound doing the cross method but you can see there it's starting to build up around the outsides and really that's not what I want so and again that's exactly what I would expect if you're putting too much on and again you can do the line method which we'll try next and I am think with the line method whichever way you do the line whether it be vertical or horizontal there's normally a little gap down the outsides so I'll try and do a, a light a straight line with this applicator here it's not the best to be honest you need a nice little thin nozzle I'll just add a little bit more at the end there just to make it even there there we go that'll do so we get the general idea here I'm not worried about that little teeny bit of compound beside it we'll just squidge this out and see what happens now as you can see here I've cleaned it all off and we'll put some pressure on this by tightening it down and you'll see how different these compounds react to pressure when you screw these down and there's a lot of people that probably use this line method and they've invented new ones lying out the swirl and the and the two dots uh, I mean really five dots Jesus Christ but I'll continue using the uh, spot method or the spread method until someone comes up with some uh, decent evidence that there's a massive difference I mean you know 20 degree difference by doing it this way then I would definitely uh, change but if it's like one celsius maximum then i'm not gonna you know trouble myself with it so i'm going to tighten this down and then i'll loosen this off and we'll take a look and uh see what it looks like now again when you're doing the gpu if you're talking about gpus it's going to be a t whole new different experience you need to use the right amount of compound because you don't want it squirting over the edges especially if you're using a uh, conductive compound uh, because obviously uh if it touches any of the components around the GPU area it's gonna cause problems and short and, and probably kill your card so be careful if you're doing that and reapplying a thermal paste to your GPU now you'll see also the liquid uh, based uh, compounds metal liquid metal compounds which you get a lot of lower temperatures with but you have to be super careful when you're using those um, now as I anticipated here we've got a little gap around the outsides and that's because we're using a line method and that's 
okay. If you look at the coverage right across the CPU in the center, that's fine. This little bit around the outside, it's not really going to matter too much. Uh, but if you really do feel that you don't want that happening, then spread it. It's as simple as that. And if you don't want the spot method, then use whatever other method you want. And you can go here and sit and do as many of these as you like. But personally, they're all going to roughly give you the same performance. You're not going to see vast amounts of difference. Now, this is the compound I used for this video. It's really sort of silver based, like Arctic silver. It's uh, from China. And I just used it because I had a big tube of it and I wanted to show you how to spread it on and how to do the dab method and all that stuff. But basically you can use whatever you like. Now some of the uh, compounds out there are going to be a lot thicker than this and they're a bit like toffee and you will have to spread them rather than uh, dab them. Uh, so just make sure that you're using uh, the right stuff that spreads if you're going to do the spread method. And uh, if you're going to do the spot method in the middle or peen method or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, it just use whatever method you like. And uh, that's going to be about it. Now, I will leave the link for that Puget Systems test. They did 12 extensive uh, tests and they also got temperatures. They did a thick line, uh, two rice sized dots, also a thin line, three thin lines, a circle shape, a rough spread, and also a spiral, circle with a dot, happy face, rice sized dot, a smooth spread, and an X shape. Now, believe it or not, after they'd done all of those tests they carried out, and there was like a one degree Celsius difference between all of that stuff. So what does that tell you? That could be difference in ambient temperature in the room, or it could be the CPU might have been running a slightly bit hot before they did the next test and they didn't let it time to cool down. There could be many different reasons, but it's only one degree Celsius, which is hardly worth getting your knickers in a twist over, to be fair. But anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Just wanted to cover this, but whatever way you choose to apply your thermal compound, let me know in the comment section below whether you use the spread method, the uh, dot method, or whatever way you do it, let me know in the comment section. And uh, I shall see you again for another video real soon. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.